Hi folks, this is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com guide to CyberLink PowerDirector. And here we are in CyberLink PowerDirector, looking at some of the cool tools in the program. Today I want to talk about subtitles. Subtitles are pretty cool because in PowerDirector you have the option of either adding your subtitles permanently imprinted on your video or making them an option that your viewers can turn on or off. And that'd be true whether you're outputting your files as a DVD or Blu-ray, in which case they have the option of turning on or off their subtitles, or there are some other video formats also they can output with optional subtitles, but I'm getting ahead of myself. To add subtitles to your movie, you'll want to go to the subtitle room. You'll find that if you go down the list of rooms here on the upper left hand side of the program and right here under the more button, those three dots, you can select the option for the subtitle room. We'll also want to make sure that we can see the subtitle track on our timeline and that's an optional track. So if you're not seeing it, right click on one of the track headers here and you'll see the option to turn on the subtitle track. There it's off. There it's on and you can see it is a track that runs along the top of your movie. And this is where we're going to lay in and synchronize our subtitles. To create a subtitle, it's very simple. All you need to do is place the playhead where you want that subtitle to appear, say right at the beginning of your movie, and click the plus button. That puts a marker down there. You can see it has a number one next to it. And then up here we can just double click and add our subtitle manually. And once we lock in that title, it appears right there in our timeline and it will stay on as long as it appears on the timeline. So by default, it stays on, as you can see, about 10 seconds. That's a long time for a little, you know, four word subtitle. So you'll probably want to ultimately trim it down or lengthen it so that it's on screen long enough for your viewer to read. You'll also place a number of subtitles here and you'll want the subtitles to be in synchronization to what's going on screen, either matching the dialogue or serving as narration for your movie. Now, manually typing in subtitles is only one way to add your subtitles. You can also import subtitles if they're in an SRT or TXT format. TXT is a very basic text format. Let me show you in a minute. Before we add our subtitles that way, I'm just going to put some markers down on the timeline. Just move the playhead to the beginning of each clip here and we'll just press plus and add a blank space. Subtitle, add another one. Add another one. Add another one. Now again, we could manually type in each of these subtitles right here, or we can import them as a block. I have created in Notepad a series of subtitles. Every place there's a break, the program will automatically break that into a separate subtitle. So as you can see, I've got five subtitles here. I've saved that as a TXT file. And then when we go back to the program, we are going to select the option to import subtitles from an SRT or TXT file. So let me just click on that button and we'll select our subtitles TXT file. Now, warning, it's gonna replace any subtitles that you manually added to your movie. So I'm gonna click, okay, that's fine with me. And there they are. These are the subtitles I created in Word. Sometimes it's much easier to create them in a Word document. The reason I didn't use Word, the reason I used Notepad is because I just wanted something that was totally unformatted. Now we've got our subtitles up here. We'll also want to watch our movie and synchronize our subtitles to the movie. Like I say, this subtitle or each subtitle is by default 10 seconds. We'll want to trim those down. We arrived on Friday, probably would be better very short here so i just trimmed off the edge and select trim only i can move this one into position so that it's in sync with what's going on screen and trim it down to the length i want it to appear on screen and so on and i would do that with all of my subtitles and so i'm synchronizing my subtitles to appear when there's relevant action going on on screen or when uh, we're translating dialogue for instance and then I'm lengthening them so that they run the duration that is necessary for the title to be read and for them to convey what's going on on screen. Now you can see by default, it's sort of an aerial font. You can change the font by coming down here and just clicking the T at the bottom of the subtitles room. And here you can see the fonts and you can see it's not aerial. 
it's that font. We can change that to any font we want. We can change it to, say, Cambria Bold if we wanted. And once we select it and click OK, that is applied to every subtitle that appears on your timeline at once so that your subtitles are consistent and they're in whatever font you want. You can also change the location of the subtitles by clicking on this little four-headed arrow and you can choose whether the subtitle uh, stays where it is on screen or whether it's a little bit higher, a little bit lower, a little bit right, a little bit left, and you can apply it to all the subtitles at once. Finally, before you output your movie, you have some options. And if you select this button at the bottom of the subtitle screen or the subtitle room, you can choose whether the subtitles remain permanently imprinted on the video file or you can have them as an option so that when you output your DVD or Blu-ray disc, your viewer can select whether those subtitles appear or not. You notice you can also output AVCHDs and MKV files with optional subtitles, assuming you're putting them, you're using them in some sort of media format where the viewer has an option to turn them on or off. So it's very cool, very powerful tool, very easy to use, and that's how you add your subtitles to your movie. Now you wanna know more about all the really cool tools and all the rooms and all of the effects and everything that's available here in CyberLink Power Director. You'll want to check out the many tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. If you want to know everything about the program, the moviepix.com guide to CyberLink Power Director is available at amazon.com. I know it's true because I wrote the book. I'm Steve Grizzetti. Hope to see you again real soon. Take care.